All right, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about non-parametric tests. Now, before that, um, just to give you um, a summary of uh, all the uh, categories that are found under hypothesis tests, right? So we have already done uh, one part of hypothesis tests, which is known as the uh, parametric test. Uh, in general, parametric test is a test about the population mean or it could be the population uh, standard deviation. Uh, some of the tools that we have uh, used to carry out this parametric test are like normal distributions, a T test, uh, or it could be a chi-square test. All right. Now, uh, under this uh, topic, we are interested to investigate on the uh, non-parametric test. All right. Now, before we move on to non-parametric test, uh, let's try to look at the uh, features, a very uh, brief summary of the features between parametric and non-parametric tests. So the first one, parametric test, as I mentioned before, is a test uh, about the population mean. Um, this test can perform uh, well under any uh, skewed distributions or non-normal distributions. Of course, uh, provided, provided the sample size must, must be uh, large enough. So by large enough, I'm saying that the sample size should be greater than or equal to 30. Now, that would actually satisfy the central limit theorem uh, for us to assume that the uh, distributions would be uh, normally distributed. All right? And then uh, lastly, these parametric tests have uh, more statistical power uh, compared to non-parametric uh, tests in this case. Right? In a way, it is more uh, reliable and then more accurate as compared to uh, non-parametric tests. But the uh, procedure involved under parametric tests is more complicated as compared to uh, non-parametric tests. And then as for non-parametric tests, um, here we are more interested in the median itself. So most of the research analysts, uh, analysis in this case, centered around the median itself. So we want to compare the sets of data, whether it's above or below the uh, median. And then uh, most of the time, uh, non-parametric tests is carried out. Uh, due to the fact that the sample size uh, collected is very limited in size, uh, which means uh, the sample size should be anything like less than 20, for instance. So that should be considered as a small sample size. All right? And then uh, the data collected uh, usually consists of ordinal data, and then uh, this data uh, somehow can be uh, ranked, or the data... Uh, has some sorts of uh, ranking in both. And then it also involves uh, outliers. Like under parametric tests, we can't actually remove outliers from the analysis. Uh, whereby for non-parametric tests, if you have an outliers, uh, we can actually uh, remove it from our analysis. Now that is the uh, key advantage of using a non-parametric test. Right? <clears throat> Okay, now we are ready to look at uh, what are the tools available under non-parametric tests. Okay, now I'm going to give you the first two um, tests carried out under non-parametric tests. The first one being uh, what we call as a sign test. So from the word itself, uh, you will know that uh, we need to sort of devise uh, some kind of plus or minus sign uh, in order to carry out this uh, sign test here. The second one is known as the Wilcoxon uh, sign rank test. All right. Now, as you can see here, this test involves uh, devising a plus or minus sign, um, including uh, performing a ranking on the uh, data observation. All right. Okay, let's try to look at what are the procedures uh, between both of these sign test and Wilcoxon sign rank test. All right, now before we look into uh, the procedures on how to carry out the sign test in the Wilcoxon sign rank test, uh, we're going to uh, briefly show you the difference between uh, sign test and Wilcoxon sign rank test in this case. Right. Now, one of the similarity between sign test and Wilcoxon sign rank test would be uh, both of them 
would have to assign a positive and negative sign to each of the data observation uh, to indicate uh, whether the data is above or below the hypothesized uh, value. So the hypothesized value here usually refer to a median. So this is one of the similarity. Uh, secondly, for sign tests, um, now once we have devised the plus or minus, we will have to count how many data set that is actually above the hypothesized value and then we have to count how many data set that is below the uh, hypothesized value. Now by knowing uh, the number of uh, uh, positive value that is above hypothesized uh, value, uh, therefore uh, we are going to uh, check whether it is substantially different um, from, from what we uh, expected um, by chance. So the number of uh, data observation that is above the, uh, above the hypothesized value and below the hypothesized value must be substantially um, significant uh, for us to be considered a good test. Right? Now, knowing that that is not uh, due to uh, chance. Right. Now, as for Wilcoxon sign rank test, instead of just having the plus or minus, uh, now we will need to uh, perform a ranking procedure by evaluating the absolute deviations. So we're going to take the uh, absolute deviations uh, after we have uh, assigned the sign here. So we're going to evaluate its absolute deviations. Uh, thereafter, we are going to use these absolute deviations to perform a ranking on the data observation. Okay, so from here, uh, we will tend to partition uh, the ranking uh, based on those data observations that is above the uh, hypothesized value, and then uh, the data that is below the hypothesized value will be uh, partitions as W negative. Right. Now, uh, for sign tests, uh, data is dropped from the sample if the observation is equal to the hypothesized value. So we are going to drop the data if, if the observation is equal to the hypothesized value. Whereby, for Wilcoxon sign rank test, uh, data is being ignored if the absolute deviation um, is equal to zero. So absolute deviations means the, the, the deviations of the data observations as compared to the hypothesized value. If the two difference, uh, if the difference between the data observed and the hypothesized value is equal to zero, uh, in general, in generally, it means if the absolute deviation, deviation is equal to zero, uh, therefore we can to ignore uh, this data set. So both of these are uh, Wilcoxon and sign rank tests uh, uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test and sign test uh, have this uh, similarity. All right. Now, but the last one will be uh, the difference between sign test and Wilcoxon sign rank test here. So for sign test, it does not consider the magnitude of the observation uh, relative to the hypothesized uh, value. Whereby Wilcoxon sign rank test uh, take into account the magnitude of the observation relative to the hypothesized value. Because under Wilcoxon sign rank test, uh, you need to perform a ranking uh, on the data observations. That's the reason why you need to take into account the magnitude of the uh, deviations, uh, whereby sign test does not uh, perform uh, calculations on absolute deviation. Right? Uh, I hope that will give you a clear idea. Uh, some of the differences and uh, similarity between the uh, sign test and Wilcoxon sign rank test. Right? Now next we're going to look at the procedure, how we're going to carry out sign test and uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test here. So the first one, sign test. Uh, for both sign test and Wilcoxon sign rank test, uh, we will have to set up the hypothesis statements. Uh, that would actually give us a clear uh, objective as to uh, what we want to achieve in our research. Now that will be the setting up the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. Now, secondly, we are going to determine the critical region. Now the critical region usually refer to the type one error alpha. So this alpha is uh, defined as probability of uh, rejecting 
the null hypothesis. Um, but the null hypothesis is actually true. Right? Now, in order not to commit this type 1 error, you want to make sure the value of the alpha should be as small as possible. Usually it's around uh, anything less than 10% uh, for the value of significant figure. Right? <clears throat> okay. Now, once we have determined the critical region, right, now we are going to look at our data observation. We're going to determine a uh, sort of count uh, how many data set that is above, how many data set that is below the hypothesized value. So we can look at the sign, the plus sign and the negative sign to determine how many are actually above, how many are actually below the uh, hypothesized value here. So from here, uh, we will check whether these uh, uh, data observations actually fall in the critical region. If it does, uh, then we will have to uh, reject the now hypothesis. Right. Now I hope that is clear how we carry out the sign test. Now next, for carrying out Wilcoxon sign rank test. Now the same procedure, the first one will be to set up the hypothesis statement. All right. Now second one will be different. Right. Second one we will have to um, determine determine the uh, absolute deviation. So we have to calculate the difference of the data observed as compared to the median itself. And then after that, we're going to determine its absolute deviation. For any data set that has an absolute deviation of zero, we will have to ignore it from the analysis. All right. Now, once we have done B, uh, we're going to perform ranking. So we're going to rank uh, all the uh, data set based on their absolute deviations. And then uh, thereafter, we can move on to step C, whereby we're going to sum up all the rank uh, that is above the hypothesized value, and then we're going to uh, sum up the rank for all the data observations that is below the uh, hypothesized value, which is uh, indicated as W negative. Now, for checking purposes, whether we did the uh, calculations correctly, uh, we're going to use this uh, checking procedure. Uh, now the W plus and the W minus, the sum of both of these must be the same as the sum of the aromatic sequence given as N divided by 2 multiplied by N plus 1 there. All right. Okay. Now once you are, uh, you have satisfied carrying out the uh, test statistics uh, sections, we are going to um, choose, yeah, choose the uh, test statistics. So once you have calculated your W plus and W minus, we're going to choose the smallest in between these two values. And then uh, next, we're going to refer to our data booklet uh, to identify the critical uh, value uh, for T. Uh, once we have identified the critical value for T, we're going to compare this with our test statistics. Uh, so if our test statistics is less than the critical T value, therefore, we're going to reject our now hypothesis. Right now, this is the simple guideline as to how to carry out the sign test and the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Right, I hope that is clear. Uh, next, we're going to look at uh, another uh, one more uh, Wilcoxon uh, test, which is called the Wilcoxon uh, rank sum test instead of uh, Wilcoxon sign rank test. All right, now stay tuned. Next, all right. So under non-parametric, we know that we can carry out sign tests. We can also carry out Wilcoxon sign rank test. Now, other than that, uh, under Wilcoxon family, uh, we can have Wilcoxon sign rank test, which you have already seen just now. Uh, next, Wilcoxon also have another test, which is known as the Wilcoxon rank sum test. All right. Now. Um, the key difference between uh, both of these is highlighted next. All right. Now, the Wilcoxon sign rank test uh, versus uh, Wilcoxon rank sum test. Uh, when do we use it? Uh, what is it for? So the first one being the Wilcoxon sign rank test is a non-parametric test that compares median of a set of number against a hypothesized uh, median. In this case, so we are merely trying to compare our data observations with the median. 
itself. So that's the purpose of the Wilcoxon sign rank test. Whereby for Wilcoxon rank sum test, it is also a non-parametric test, uh, but it is used to compare uh, two independent groups of data, two unmatched groups of data. And then uh, if you're interested to uh, read more, uh, this test is quite similar to Man whitney uh, test. Right? Uh, yeah, you have to read more on that to find out uh, how similar it is. But we don't actually do uh, man with need tests in our syllabus here, right? Okay, so I hope that is clear. And then lastly, I'm going to show you the procedure how to carry out the Wilcoxon rank sum test. In this case. Okay, now the procedure is listed here uh, to carry out the Wilcoxon rank sum test. Uh, now the same procedures uh, for any any one of the hypothesis tests, we have to set up the hypothesis statement first. Once we have set up the hypothesis statement, uh, now we will have to rank. Uh, we will have to rank all the data set for the two uh, sorry uh, for the two unmatched uh, groups of data. So one group has a sample size of m. The other one has a sample size for uh, of n in this case. All right. Now, uh, in this case, we will have to uh, check that the sample size for m uh, usually is the one that is less than uh, the sample size for uh, n here. All right. So first step, we're going to rank them from 1 to m plus 1. And then once we have done that, we're going to calculate the sum of the uh, uh, a ranking for each group. So like you have group X and group Y, we're going to sum up all the ranking. And then for checking purposes, we're using the same aromatics uh, uh, summation sequence here. All right. And then uh, next, for test statistics, that depends on your uh, now and your alternative hypothesis uh, statements. For lower tail tests, uh, lower tail tests, the uh, test statistics will be given by the uh, sum of the rank for uh, the group has a sample size M, which means the group with a smaller sample size. Whereas for the upper tail test, the st test statistics T uh, will be given by this formula here. All right? Uh, M multiplied by M plus 1 plus 1 uh, plus N plus 1 minus W, whereby the W is obtained from the sum of the rank uh, for sample size M, which is uh, the sample that is smaller than sample size N. Right. Now, as for two tail tests, we have to choose the minimum value uh, between W and uh, this um, expression here. Right. Now, as you know, once we have uh, finished carrying out the test hypothesis, uh, the test statistic, we can to obtain the critical value from data booklet or it can be from your uh, calculator itself. And then finally, we can to make a conclusion as to whether we can to reject or um, accept the null hypothesis. If the critical value is uh, greater than, if the critical value that you obtain from the data booklet is greater than the test statistics value, therefore we can to uh, reject the now hypothesis. All right. Now I hope that this would give you a, a good idea or good overview as to uh, how all these three different types of non-parametric tests um, should be carried out, and then um, why and um, when are we supposed to use them? All right. Now next, I'm going to give you uh, all the um, uh, the detailed example as to how we're going to carry out each one of these non-parametric tests using sign tests, Wilcoxon sign rank test, and then lastly, uh, how to apply Wilcoxon rank sum test. All right, stay tuned.